Hello and welcome, I'm Count Christo and this is the first of our very quick tutorials on uh, Hearts of Iron 4. I'm going to show you today why you should use fallback lines, not the garrison order. So I've set up a very quick uh, 1939 start here, we're going to let everyone take their positions. We're not going to manage this game in at all normal or sensible way. Let's have those guys stand there. So I've set up my uh, standard port defense strategy, which is you put one fallback line on every port and on every coastal, uh, oh, I missed one in fact, on every coastal victory point. This is because coastal victory points give supply, same as the ports. So if they try to land on the ports, my guys will kill them, and if they try to land next to the ports, I should be able to attack them and kill them. To try to land on a victory point, again, my guys should be able to kill them. So let's go to war with Poland here, and we're just going to very quickly uh, let the AI handle this attack. We're not here for for managing the battle with Poland. So we'll just let the AI do that. Right, so, uh, oh yes, I need to call in uh, Slovakia here, of course. Right, so, you can see when you do this, you use the minimum number of troops to have one person on each port and each uh, each victory point. And the other way you can do it is by having your men and giving them a fallback, sorry, a garrison command, like this, right? And you can give them the garrison only ports order which will send one of these people person one of these divisions to each port <clears throat> and then it will put excess guys on each extra port so if we just uh, let them all arrive here for a moment okay so it's put two guys here two guys here two guys here one two here and one here for some reason it's missed Hamburg because Hamburg is a victory point we haven't talked to guard victory points Problem is, if we command it to guard victory points, it's also going to guard Hanover, with an equal preference regarding Hanover as guarding Hamburg. So that's a total waste of this division. You're going to have divisions wasted if you use the port garrison, if you use the garrisoning command. The other issue is, let's say you were to win the battle against Poland, which we could just expedite here slightly by giving some victory point rushing orders. So the first thing is, as soon as you start adding more than the number, odds uh, that you have of ports, odds are you're going to start wasting troops. They're going to start defending inland victory points. That becomes even more of an issue if the states you're involved with have more inland victory points. So if you were to use a garrison order on this state here of Flanderen, you'd have one person on Ghent, one on Antwerpen, and one on Brussels before you'd ever get two on Gwent. And I think it would prefer preferentially put more guys on Brussels before it put them on Ghent. You could just use port defences, but then if they land on Hamburg, they've got some supply. If ten guys land on Hamburg with supply, they could easily take your guy, one guy in Kiel. So that's one of the problems with that. And now if we could just uh, expedite this slightly. You guys, just take Warsaw for me, would you? Thank you. So, yes, the other problem that we're going to see in just a moment... If you could take Danzig, that'd be good. The other thing we're going to see in just a moment is that... Uh, if you add more guys to this, if you add more troops to this order, so if I took all of these guys here, and I said, you know what, I want to have four guys on every port. Let's get these 33. I'm not doing the maths, but you get these 33. Put them all in your port garrison order. Right. Now let's see what happens. They're going to spread out. First off, none of them's going to this one. That seems extremely odd. They're going to put six here. Okay, there goes uh, Poland. Good. So we're going to put all these guys in here, just because the more men you put in, the more clear how unbalanced this is. And for fairness' sake, let's remove... Sorry, clarity's sake, let's just remove the guys from those uh, fallback lines. So, for some reason, this port doesn't matter. And you can see it very clearly is in the area that I've told them to garrison. But that port, that's worth one guy. This port here, let's put 11 troops on that port. This port, 16. Fantastic. So, it has no sensible layout as to where to put people. And remember, the, uh, the Danish belts, they're open. The the enemy can naval invade to here, right now, or here. So it's massively disproportionate about where it puts troops. The other issue is, if situations change, like so, the AI then recalculates what it's doing. And as it's recalculating, here, for example, three people left here, and it's going to send probably some more guys in to reinforce it? No? It's just got even worse calculation. There's no one that's going to be defending here anymore. And we have got it still on garrison victory points and naval bases. They're going to put one tank, a division not very good on the defensive, 
are holding this port. 10 here, 11 here. The other issue that can happen, which I didn't successfully demonstrate there, but I assure you does happen, is when you add more guys to it, sometimes it will, let's say if I added all these guys to this, not a brilliant tactical maneuver, I admit. Sometimes what will happen when you do that is it will say, okay, these three, they're going to guard that port. So these three are free to go and help guard that port. At which point these guys immediately start strategically redeploying over here. At which point, if at that moment an AI invasion hits, a naval invasion hits here, then you've just lost that port. And that, in the short and sweet, is why I always take the time to do this and put a fallback line on every coastal province. Like that. And the quick way to assign people to lots of fallback lines is you select everyone, hold down control, left click, deselect the number you want, next one, left click, deselect two, and hold shift while you're deselecting. Like that. Simple as that. And it really doesn't take very long if you just take the time to go through and do that. And then everyone else can stand over here. And uh, France can take Germany. So that's why you should not use the garrison thing to defend your ports. The garrison command is useful, in my opinion, exclusively for uh, putting men into your boot camp while you're training them and for resistance suppression. It's the only thing it's good for, in my opinion. Other than that, you should always use fallback lines. It takes a little bit longer, but it's definitely worthwhile. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.